And so that's when the Lord began to speak to me and said, look, the problem of bringing revival is this, you know, historical fact of racism. You know, it's like uh, the land is cursed because of that. So what the Lord told me is that if the, you know, the predominantly white churches in the city would get together and this is what the Lord told me and get a cross, I'm like a wooden cross and have like a, a march like a you know like they used to have a civil rights march but this is a white people have a march with that cross but in you know and the thing is is that the the clan used to burn crosses right the Ku Klux Klan would take cross and set it on fire right so that's why it's so ironic that the Lord was telling me this take a cross to the oldest historical black church in Winston-Salem and plant that cross in front of the church but not set it on fire which is what the evil people did, the wicked people did, but instead set it up and then the white people would repent of, of the wrongs of the past, of making people sit in the back of the bus. I mean, of course, all the way back to slavery and all that. But these churches were founded in a time of segregation, but they weren't you know, part of slavery. But these churches were founded under you know, the Jim Crow time period. If they would repent of that, and then let the, and ask the historical black churches to forgive them and let's have some race resec, res, res, uh, reconciliation and forgiveness on the part of the black people and repentance on part of the white people on behalf of even with the church. You know, the, all, the vast majority of Christians weren't, you know, supporting civil rights. Some were, but lots were not. So that they would repent of that. Then God would heal the land and send revival. Now, that's the formula the Lord gave me for Winston-Salem. That may be true for the whole United States, in particular the southern states, right? Uh, but there was slavery before in these northern states, too, way back. Um, you know, it ended earlier than the Civil War. Anyway, the Lord gave me that. And I was so excited that I kept trying to message and call the pastor. And he got, one of the, he got a guy who ended up being a mayor of a small town where I used to live who was like his business advisor to grow the church to call me and, or message me. And he kept telling me, oh, he used all these business terms. I went to several meetings of the altar workers where he was there and he, did, he had all these schematics and all of this demonic trash on the chalkboard of, you know, the system of how, you know, it's like, it's like when you remember the schoolhouse rock things, you know, I'm just a bill, I'm only a bill. And it shows the diagram of how a bill becomes a law. It was like that. You know, you got all these committees and all this system, and you know, he's got all these big buzzwords that you, you know, synergy and whatever. I don't know exactly what the buzzwords were at this time. That was like 2001, 2002. But anyway, whatever the buzzwords were then, maybe it was uh, paradigm, was probably a big word at that time. Paradigm shift. Uh, you know, think outside the box. Uh, that all this stuff. And he gave me 101 excuses why the pastor. You know, couldn't even hear me, and hear, you know, I had to submit the idea to committees and all this other stuff. And so that's when I had my, I already had a baptism by fire, as they say, of religion when I dealt with the Baptist church that I was in who rejected the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then when I went to this supposedly a spirit-filled church, I found out that I was running right up against a business corporation. 